2002 season of the Matchroom Sport PGA Euro Pro Tour ended in Portugal with the Tour Championship and Scott Paul McKechnie collecting not only the title but also a check for £20,000 in a thrilling finale to the season. In 2003 promises more of the same, great young players from golf's major developmental tour going head to head week in week out. Winners from last season back this year, all chasing a dream that John Morgan achieved last season to break into golf's big league. Morgan went from novice to pro, gaining his US and European tour cards in the space of just a year. It's the dream that inspires the players in this year's Matchroom Sport PGA Euro Pro Tour. The tour runs from May to October, taking in some of Europe's finest courses. There are four events in Portugal, as well as tournaments across the British Isles. The tour is attracting new and exciting talent, such as Jamie Elson. And a crop of international stars attracted by the tour's prize money and high level of competition. I think it's the best tour to, to try it was a great experience uh, the course was really good and uh, the competition here is uh, I mean it's probably just the same as on the challenge tour so uh, enjoyed it a lot European tour players such as Bradley Dredge recognize the value of the tour it's fantastic I mean um, trying to trying to get through all these young guys I mean it's perfect really um, really I, I mean from, from my sort of experience I think that uh, playing um, as much competitive golf as you can just gets you ready for, for the main sort of main tour. You can just keep playing whatever sort of standard it is. Just keep playing competitive golf, play for money, play for wherever you can. Uh, it gets you ready for the uh, for the main tour. That's, that's where it is. And it all starts here at the Marriott Saint Pierre in Wales. Over 160 golfers are lining up for the first event in this year's tour. 40,000 in prize money and tour cards for the top four at the end of the season. Also entry to stage two of the qualifying school on the European tour for the top five players. Welcome to the 2003 Match from Sport PGA Euro Pro Tour. Our season begins with the Sky Sports Classic at the Marriott St. Pierre Golf and Leisure Resort in Chepstow. St. Pierre is no stranger to hosting professional events, having already held 14 European Tour events plus the 1996 Ladies Solheim Cup. Such famous names as Greg Norman, Annika Sorensen, Severiano Ballesteros and Nick Faldo have all walked the sacred turf at St. Pierre. Now it's the turn of Europe's future stars. With the new season, we have fresh faces and fresh hope. It's an international field, so watch carefully because you could be seeing Europe's next big star. The Marriott Saint Pierre is familiar with the demands of championship golf, according to Director of Golf, Ben Lang. The course is tough, it's just over 6,700 yards long. We start off with a very, very tough par 5, um, which, which is unique. Um, very hard to get a door into. Um, the front nine is tough. We've got a loop of three holes, beginning with the um, third which is uh, quite exposed, it's um, up on the high ground and that can be a uh, toughy holes to play. Um, the back nine is also tough, we have a couple of par fives which are reachable in two, so there's opportunities for birdies and eagles on those holes. And then we finish on the 18th, which is our signature hole, which is um, 235 yards carry over a lake to the green, so that is a really tough hole and has blighted many good scorecards. Whether it's the venue or the tour itself, there's no denying that the appearance of Bradley Dredge has given the tour an early season boost. Because the, the way the tour schedule is set up, um, I, I don't like to play more than four in a row, four tournaments in a row. So um, there's some, some nice events coming up, uh, Benson Hedges, then we've got the Deutsche Bank, Paul PGA, and Kellogg Manor. So uh, I'll be playing those. Um, it's sort of almost like a natural break for me, but even when I have a week off, I always sort of play and practice. So I thought it's a perfect opportunity to come down here in St. Pierre and uh, you know, just have some good competition and uh, sharp another game ready for next week. Dredge didn't have it all his own way in the opening round of the Sky Sports Classic. In difficult conditions, his round of 69 put him firmly on the leaderboard, but not the commanding lead that some might have expected. It was Ireland's Paddy Gribben who topped the board after the first round with a 67, including six birdies and a couple of bogeys. An impressive start for a player who finished runner-up in this year's tour school.
four under. Um, you know, it's a it's a nice start. Um, at six six birdies and two bogeys. You know, so uh, hit the ball very well. Jamie Elson had a costly front nine with two bogeys, but at the turn he found his form, and three birdies on 10, 14 and 15 left him one under par after 18 holes. His recent outings on the European Tour at the Qatar Masters and the Dubai Desert Classic could stand him in good stead for a strong second round. Jonathan Beasley went one better with a round of 69. The tour's more established stars had a brief flourish on the 10th. Lorne Kelly, Kyron Sullivan and Chris Gill all came within inches of eagles on this par 4 hole. But all three eventually scored 76, leaving them way off the pace and no place for them on the first leaderboard of this year's Sky Sports Classic. Confirmation then of that fantastic first round by Paddy Gribben to take him to four under, but he'll be acutely aware of Bradley Dredge, Stephen Pullen and Jonathan Beasley all in second place. Jamie Elson leads the rest of the pack. On the morning of the second round, there were a total of 23 greenkeepers and some PGA staff on every green on the course to remove the excess water, which was a result of the 10 millimetres of rain that poured down overnight. Pullen, who shot a 69 in round one, clearly didn't like the changing conditions, and his second round of 76 must surely have dented his chances of a first win on the tour. As expected, Bradley Dredge was one of the more consistent players out there. A solid 69 on day one was followed up by a 72 in round two, tying for second on the leaderboard. Sean Whiffin shot 74 in round one, but in the wet and windy conditions of the second day, his 67 stood out and took Whiffin from the lower reaches of the leaderboard to level with Bradley Dredge at one under. David Salisbury was one of the more consistent golfers out there with rounds of 71 and 70, regardless of the conditions, and he also joins Whiffin and Dredge on one under. But it was South African Louis Oosthuizen who stole the show on day two with a round of 68. Add to that his round of 72 from day one, and the South African found himself a shot clear at the top of the leaderboard. Well, we started off a bit in the rain the first 12 holes, and um, the last seven holes I got it going. I started off with two birdies on 10 11, my first two holes, and then the last seven I really got it going, and uh, I think I played two under, so it was nice. So to the second round leaderboard and Louis Oosthuizen of South Africa coping very well with the conditions for that one shot lead. But Bradley Dredge still nestled there in second place at one under along with Sean Whiffin and David Salisbury. And don't count out the likes of Paddy Gribben and Tom Whitehouse down in seventh at one over. Welcome back to the Sky Sports Classic. After tough opening rounds, only four players have managed to break par. In the lead on two under is South African Louis Oosthuizen. One behind, as expected, is European tour player Bradley Dredge. This is what awaits the players as they start their final round, a 575-yard par-5 opening hole. In rounds one and two, just 14 birdies were made here, but more importantly, this hole has proved costly. 55 bogeys in the first two rounds, and in fact the first three holes here at Saint-Pierre have proved very costly indeed for those who have already started their final rounds. Of the first 40 outs, only four players have made an impression on their scores. The rest have stood still or dropped shots. On this hole, Paddy Gribben, the leader from round one, made a promising start with a fine approach shot. But for Graham Storm, his opening hole summed it up for many out there. It all went horribly wrong. Five shots later, he was playing out of the bunker on the left, ending up with a triple bogey, and that leaves Storm five shots off the leader. The leading golfers waiting at the first are starting to focus on the round that lies ahead of them. Well, yesterday I wanted to break 70. I thought that pretty much get me in the final group. So I was only one away, so I think uh, it seems a little bit nicer today, so the scores should be a little bit better. So maybe, I don't know, as low as possible. I'm just going to try and take each other as it comes, I suppose. Just try and uh, keep it, keep any silly shots out of the bag and stop those silly bogeys, I guess. And relax as much as possible. <laughs> 
So while we join David Salisbury on his third round, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined in the commentary box by Lawrence Farmer. Lawrence, of course, former European Tour player, now on the European Seniors Tour, but also known to many of you as coach to Alison Nicholas, former US Open champion. Uh, good drive from Salisbury, but conditions proving very tough here today, Lawrence. You're right, Simon. The forecast is not very good today. We've got winds uh, picking up all day and uh, the wet. The, the rain is uh, going to be constant all day, I believe, so it's going to be tough for the players out there all day. Certainly tough for Paddy Gribben, our leader after round one. Things haven't gone quite as well. Finds himself two over now as he hits his tee shot into the third. Now, Sean Whiffen, the 32-year-old from Enfield, one under on this uh, par five, and he needs this par putt. He's looking at a pretty straight putt here, but I think he's just got a bit anxious there, Simon. So just missed the top side of the hole and looking a little disappointed with himself, but uh, Sean usually looks a little bit glum sometimes on the uh, course. He certainly does. So, yeah, so, um, Sean is uh, a nice lad, very, uh, very laid back, almost horizontal. Well, David Salisbury enjoying his round of golf, but uh, he's going to be kicking himself after that one, and the putt's just not dropping moment as we said in these difficult conditions it's been very difficult actually um, they've got it in really good condition here and uh, the fairways are narrow rough is um, is up a little bit so it's quite thick and also with a bit of rain we've had it makes it obviously very wet as well um, so it's then you got the wind uh, so all in all it, it's it's a good test it really is well at first um, I couldn't get the greens right and um, just I only played six holes in the practice round and uh, just went through the round on the yardage book and um, I think it's quite nice it's quite long with the wind and everything but it's a good course for it. Paddy Gribben then the 34 year old experienced Walker Cup player will need all his experience on this birdie putt. It so looks like he's just raced it by just a wee bit there Simon so he's got to take his time with this next one concentrate a bit on that one. Now Bradley Dredge, as we said, has been sat in that second spot throughout this whole tournament. And he will want to pressure the leaders from this first hole onwards. Yes, I think that was a really nice looking swing there. Well balanced for this first shot of the day. So this tester now for Gribben. Settles over the putt. Yes, he's really concentrating hard on this. Well, that's a pity, just uh, le leaked off to the right a wee bit. Well, the camera's just shortening the distance there to the hole, but that was possibly just a little bit longer than it looked. Mm -hmm. It certainly was. Yeah, I should think it was a good four-footer. So Gribben on two over. Walks away looking just a little disconsolate after mm -hmm. such a good start to this event. Now then, Louis Oosthuizen of South Africa, two under, had a fantastic second round, compact little golfer, seems to be dealing with the conditions well. Yes, he looks very good golfer, this lad. Great rhythm, quite powerful looking swing too. I think this lad's going to be a very, very good player. A good tee shot for the 20-year-old from Mossel Bay. David Salisbury then, still at one under on this par three. And of course, a chance to uh, shoot for that hole in one a chance to win a Peugeot car by the end of the season. I'm sure that won't be uh, completely at the forefront of his mind at the moment. No, no, that was a nice punch shot there. He held that in quite nicely, controlling the ball really well, up to about look, 10 foot away. It's really a lovely shot. Dredge once again, just short of the green. Mm -hmm. Chip and run in here. Oh, he's lobbed it. It's a nice little pitch. Yeah, it's come up the plateau. That's very good. Great shot. Well, some guts from Dredge and rightly rewarded. Very, very close with that shot. Now, Sean Whiffin. You can hear the rain coming down now, Simon. It's getting quite heavy. It looks like he's just come off that a wee bit there, Simon, so I assume the ball's leaking a bit right here. Yes, he's just missed out on the right-hand side. So he doesn't manage to attack the pin quite as much as his playing partner, David Salisbury. Back to Oosthuizen. Fifth, of course, in 2003 in the Zambian Open. So certainly coming off some good form into this event. Yes, I think he appeared very well in the South African Am uh, Open as well, finishing back 14th, I believe. Certainly, yeah, 14th was his result there. 
obviously a competent golfer. This is Sean for a birdie on the third. Oh, he's a uh, great putt that. I think he didn't expect that one to happen, I'm sure. Oh, great part from Sean. And a wry smile, I think I see there, or is he just sheltering from the rain? Really is starting to come down here. Back to Louis Oosthuizen. Two under, this is for par. Yeah, it's nicely held, that. Nicely held. And a solid putt from the South African. Looks like the remnants of an interesting hairstyle there for Oosthuizen. <laughs> but back to Salisbury. And yes, again, just pulled this putt a wee bit there. Well, that was a shame. Never really gave that a chance. Not a chance, no. Seems pretty happy with it though, Simon, I think, for the way he's walking off the green. And so he should be. David Salisbury still on one under as he opts for the brolly to shelter from the conditions. But the current leaderboard, Louis Oosthuizen, still out in first position. But now he's been joined on two under by Bradley Dredge. Whiffin, Salisbury and Whitehouse all still in the hunt. Dredge then wrapped up against the elements on this par three third hole. Taking his time over this shot and he's really concentrated very well on his game here so far. Yeah, see a three quarter swing there, keeping the ball down nicely but it just came up a bit short. Run onto the front edge there Simon. Well the look on his face there as it came up early out of that shot he'll be disappointed with that he's played so sensibly throughout the previous two rounds. Sean Whiffin then still on one under and still looking very good. This could certainly be one of the better finishes in his career, but into the bunker. Yes, he's left a difficult shot there. He's got a step to come over onto the green and uh, quite a long bunker shot, one of the hardest shots in golf. So Bradley Dredge just got the break off the bank there. Still has a chance with the putt. It's a good putt from there, Simon, because he had a little step to come up on the green. Made it a little bit more tricky than it sees on the television there. So Dredge should have a safe par here. Just marks the ball to take a little time over that one. Yes, you need to clean the ball when the water when the water starts getting on the greens. It picks up any little bit of dirt. Now Oosthuizen, another chance for a birdie, and this would take him into an outright lead at three under. But it's a tough chance. It's a wonderful opportunity for these young lads to take on Bradley Dredge, a European Tour pro, and a winner this year in the Madeira Open. So it's a good experience for them to chase this fella. And certainly doing well. The strength in depth on this Euro Pro Tour really being shown over this weekend and they've not let Bradley Dredge get away at any stage mm -hmm. but uh, Oosthuizen just coming up short. We have Sean now playing his uh, third shot on the fourth from the bunker. As you said Lawrence a tough one for him. Uh, he's played it very well, very well, he's come out very well. It's a lot of check on that just to hold it up. And the green's still playing fairly fast even in these conditions. They certainly are, yes with all the water lying on it. The greens must be very, very good this week. And another confident putt from the South African, and he has looked the business in and around the uh, the sort of two, three foot margin around the hole. For a young fellow, he looks very competent. So whiffing once again. Poor putt. Oh dear, it's a shame. So disappointing for the man from Enfield. Let's hope that his challenge doesn't start to crumble over these final holes. He goes down now to level par. But David Salisbury also faced with a tester. Yeah, it's nicely in. And confidently put away by David Salisbury. And progressing well through this third round. then that Bradley Dredge has picked up another birdie to take him to three under and he finally gets clear of the field. It's the first time we've seen the experienced European Tour player break from the rest of the field but I'm sure Oosthausen, Salisbury, Whiffin and of course Whitehouse will have something to say about that before the end of the day.
Welcome back to the Sky Sports Classic. With players now well into their round, the challenge in front of them will be even clearer. Well, the challenge couldn't be more clear for the leader, Bradley Dredge. He's got himself into that top spot. Now he's going to want to hold it for the rest of this round, while the rest of the field will be chasing hard. And here is the leader, Bradley Dredge, with his tee shot on the sixth. And how much will his experience count over these final holes? Well, I think it's going to be valuable, actually, because the weather, and it's, it's getting very, very tough. The fairways are narrow. The rough is thick. Some of the fairways are only 15 yards wide, so it's going to play very tough for the inexperienced ones. Well, the weather must be bad because uh, Sean Whiffin has finally got the rain jacket on. But uh, the player yeah. from Enfield, gone back to level, has got, got a good very shot. Very fine shot into there. Slightly uphill second shot there. And sat down very quickly. Nice uphill putt he's got there. Louis Oosthuizen was the leader until Dredge got past him. And another one of those compact swings in these conditions. Yes, you can see how quickly the ball's settling in now. The ground is getting quite wet. It's a beautiful little short hole, that is, the sixth hole. David Salisbury has slipped back to level par. And uh, hopefully his challenge won't fade. Yes, I think this is a little bit up the left-hand side, yes. He's pulled into the bunker. Quite a tough shot, and it gets wet. The bunkers might be plugging now. Our first look now at one of the identical Pullen twins. This is Steve who's uh, started to mount a challenge, and with shots like that, it's easy to see why. Well, this is a good shot. He's Bradley Dredge playing his bunker shot on the sixth hole. It's getting a bit wet now, you can see, but that's a very fine shot. He's laid up very nicely there. Just got him left about an eight-footer for his par. Salisbury then trying to uh, repeat something similar to the shot that we've seen from Dredge. Again, gets good height on it, but doesn't quite hold it no, as much. Very good shot, very good shot, but it's uh, deep maybe in that bunker there, so he had to get a very difficult to get spin when it's getting wet. Back to Steve Pullen then, and his birdie putt just misses. That's a shame. That's a shame for Pullen. He'd have wanted to uh, sink that putt, but as we've seen over the last few holes, a few putts around that distance have not gone down, and that will be another interesting challenge for these players. Now Dredge, still on three under, needs this par putt to keep the lead. Yes, well hold. This is going to be a very fine tournament. Nobody's getting away with it. Uh, so it's going to be very, very close. Now Sean Whiffin on the seventh. Another birdie putt That's for him. Yeah, and once again, he's missed. Didn't read the borrow very well there, I think. It's just a little bit of left to right and looked as if he hit it pretty straight. Well, this will be a test for Sean Whiffin. A little frustrating over the last few holes. Now, Oosthuizen, conversely, has looked rock solid on the greens. Yeah, it's a nice rhythm in the putt there. Yeah, very good putt. And once again, a great putt takes him to three under, and he joins Bradley Dredge at the top of the leaderboard. David Salisbury won't want to let them get too far away from him but he's yeah. up and walking yeah. early this is a great tour for these young players to play in uh, Simon the uh, country has looked for a tour like this for a long time you've either only had two tours which is the European tour or the challenge tour but this is breeding all the players for the future uh, of the European tour it's a good experience for them experience of course not just out on the course they uh, have the experience of the media to cope with the television cameras around watching their every move and it really is excellent preparation for these young players plus playing for the funds as well the prize money it's, uh, gets a bit more jittery then I should think that helps and uh, the jitters there for David Salisbury as he goes to one over now Tom Whitehouse the first time we've seen this young man had a few successes on last year's tour just come up a bit short again there's got a little step on that green so it uh, hasn't risen above the step Steve Pullen with his tee shot at the par 3 13th remember of course every par 3 a chance for that elusive hole in one and a chance to win the Peugeot car all the hole in ones at the end of the season will go through to a playoff where someone will get lucky now Nick Ludwell He's a fine Yorkshire player, this lad. He's uh, coached by Peter Cowan. Very good player. Was 
spent a little time with illness at one time, but he's recovered and he's uh, battling on quite well now. Another Yorkshire lad, from one Yorkshire lad to another. Nice little chip here. And it looks very good shot. Nice little save I think he's going to have here. Oh, very good shot, Stephen. Oh, confident work for Stephen from the rough. And this beautiful Parkland course here at the uh, Marriott Saint-Pierre in the west of Wales, providing the perfect backdrop for the season opener on the Euro Pro Tour. Back to Tom Whitehouse then with his long birdie putt on the 12th. Oh, oh, he just gave it a go. That, was, that was a fine putt. A fine putt. So Good way too. He looks very, very disappointed in that. And there took a long time after that putt. I'm sure Whitehouse will recover. He's that sort of character. Now, Paddy Gribben. Things have uh, slipped for him after a great opening round. Two over, but uh, fairly confident that this Walker Cup player can get himself back in contention. You've got the pin on the front edge there, Simon, and that's quite a tricky pin placement to get near the flag because you have to pitch it short of the green, and who knows what the front edges are like. They look pretty soft. We have Nick here putting for his birdie on the 12th, and it looks like it's just going to get away from him, or no, it's just caught the left edge. It's a fine birdie putt. Very good. Dead weight shows it sometimes can fall in. Well, great shot from Nick Ludwell and Paddy Gribben, the Irishman. Similar length putt. Very good. Nice putt. You don't see too many of the youngsters with the long putter, but uh, he looks like he uses it very well. And that takes Paddy Gribben back to one over, but still out in the lead. It's Bradley Dredge, the Welsh golfer at three under, and Louis Oosthuizen of South Africa really giving him a, a run for his money, while Whiffen, Pullen and Whitehouse are all still there or thereabouts, but Ludwell has now come into the reckoning. Here is Louis Oosthuizen, the joint leader on the seventh hole, par four. Well, he's just pulled a little left by the looks of it, so it's just going to miss the green, I think, on the left-hand side. Yes, it's gone into the bunker. I'd be a bit disappointed with that, but it's uh, up and down, eh? nice par. Now, Nick Ludwell with his tee shot on the 13th par three. And Ludwell has made a bit of a charge on this third round. And we'll be looking for a good shot here, but he's come yeah. up way short. Yes, he's got a little bit of a tricky shot now. He hasn't got much room on the green to play with, but so he need a little bit of thinking about this shot. Now, joint leader Bradley Dredge will be loving this tussle at the top of the table. He said he came here to uh, really try his game out against these PGA Euro Pro Tour players, and uh, they are giving him a very good run for his money over these three rounds, but a great shot from Dredge. Here's Tom Whitehouse on the uh, 13th hole, tee shot. Young Tom here made the cut in the British Open last year, so he's a fine player. So we can't leave him at the reckoning either. He's just come up just a little bit short right there, but again, nice little chip and putt, save his par. Now, who's toising into this bunker? A tricky bunker shot here too, Simon. Looks a bit down downhill, yes. It's come out a bit low, so he's afraid he's going to go a bit run past. And he has run past a long way. That's going to put his uh, short game under pressure. He's uh, putting around the greens, of course. It's been fantastic so far. Well, there's a fine chip from Nick Ludwell. Nice little check on the second bounce and going to save a nice little par there. Well, Nick Ludwell starting to look very confident, very relaxed out there. Yeah, it's a nice little tap in there. And a 30-year-old Yorkshireman from a golfing family. There's Louis trying to save his par. He's got nice firm, but he's run it a bit past, I'm afraid. That's a drop shot. And he's got this for a bogey. Well, his confidence was there, but uh, maybe a little overconfident as he ran that way past the hole. And Oosthuizen faced with a tester. Now back to Tom Whitehouse. Played uh, a nice shot after that uh, slightly wayward approach. Yeah, it's a nice putt, that. Nice save, and he's quite chuffed with that by the looks of it. That was nice. A little pump of the arms there, just uh, <laughs> trying to keep it quiet, but yeah. that was good from Whitehouse. Now Bradley Dredge 
this is good for him because uh, he maybe won't have expected the players to keep pushing him so hard and that was a, a very good putt in yeah it's a nice birdie putt takes him one shot in front now now dredge is starting to make his move as uh, we expected lawrence farmer of course alongside me in the commentary box saying that uh, this is where his experience would count and it's up to the rest of this field the likes of steve pullen to try to keep shooting with dredge well, that's a fine shot this coming down by the side of the tree yes it's going to bounce nicely up on the big flag very good shot then very good shot another attacking shot from steve pullen now oosthuizen with this tough putt he's sunk everyone on this third round so far and finally he misses well, it's a double bogey simon there he's fallen back left bradley dredge just a little bit in front now and have to do some hard work to catch him up and that's a shame for the young South African. A really unfortunate mistake has dropped him down back uh, into contention with the rest of the field. It's a nice uh, green, this. It's got water all the way around the left-hand side and around the back, and the pin's on the tight right, so it's made it very awkward bringing that right side into play. But there's a very fine birdie putt from Stephen Pullin. Gets him back to level par for the tournament and still in contention. Well, after dropping a shot on the eighth and another costly miss on the ninth, the South African Louis Oosthuizen is now back to one over. However, his playing partner Bradley Dredge has capitalized on Oosthuizen's drop in form and has now moved to five under with birdies on the seventh and the eighth, four shots clear of Nick Ludwell. Ludwell finds himself in second place following two birdies in succession on the 14th and 15th. While Sean Whiffin and playing partner David Salisbury have dropped two shots since the start of the final round. However, they find themselves still in the running for a top three finish along with one of the Pullen twins, Stephen, who's currently level par with one hole to play. So confirmation that Bradley Dredge, Wales's top ranked golfer in the world, has moved to five under and finally opened up a gap. Louis Oosthuizen's challenge drops away and the mantle of chasing Dredge has now been passed to Ludwell, Pullen and Whitehouse. Welcome back to the Marriott Saint-Pierre. Let's take a look at the 18th with my co-commentator Lawrence Farmer. There's not too many holes in, go in golf courses where you finish with a par three, but this is a very, very tricky par three. Um, it's played one of the toughest in the first two rounds. To give you some idea, these are the stats. It's had seven birdies, 79 pars, 65 bogeys, and 11 others. The green is ra uh, elevated like a bowler hat, so it's very tricky to, land, uh, to get a landing, so it needs a pinpoint accuracy. And Stephen Pullen doing just that. Good shot from him. Now then, the leader, Bradley Dredge, with an eagle putt on the 14th. Well, if he holds this, Simon, he'll take a, a good sh good lead and very difficult to catch. But that's a fine putt. He's given a good tacking putt and had a chance for an eagle. So Stephen Pullen, level par with his tap in at the 18th. And uh, a good third round for Stephen. He'll be very pleased with that finish. He's posted a very good score there, level par for the tournament. In this conditions, it's very, very good. Now, Louis Oosthuizen, unlucky man, you'd have to say, putting so well until a few holes ago. And he's given that a good run. That's a good putt. Needs that to tidy up for his par. So, just marking the ball, going to take his time. The confidence just deserting him a little over these last few holes, but uh, it's been a good round and a good tournament nevertheless for the South African. Bradley Dredge now with the birdie putt. Bradley Dredge just moving away from the field, Simon. He's just uh, taking a little bit of a nice lead now and uh, gonna be very hard to catch. After a birdie on the 14th and this par putt on the 15th, Sean Whiffin remains at one under, going into the final three holes. Paddy Gribben needs to birdie the final hole to go to level par, and he comes very close with his chip. But tournament leader Bradley Dredge takes his first bogey of the final round at the 16th 
adding a little edge to the final two holes. Confirmation that Bradley Dredge's good work to go to six under has been undone at the 16th. But the remaining golfers are still battling it out for the points. The leading golfer on the PGA Euro Pro Tour Order of Merit after the fourth event gets an invite to the £1.5 million British Masters this season at the Marriott Forest of Arden. And Sean Whiffin playing his second shot now to the 17th. A birdie at this moment in the tournament will be very valuable. Whiffin definitely on course for his best finish ever. And that's great reward for the experienced golfer from Enfield. Yes, he's uh, left that a little bit right, got a little bit of a long putt there across the green, but uh, still a birdie chance. Now on to the 18th and Nick Ludwell's tee shot at this par three. Now he's found the green, that's a fine shot. That's a fine shot now, we've got a birdie chance. Just to find the green is good, a par is very good. And Ludwell has shown real character over these closing holes. Now, Sean Whiffin, his difficult putt for this birdie. Well, let's hope he's given this a chance to get a birdie. And uh, no, I'm afraid he's left this short. Well, that's a shame for Sean Whiffin, but it's not the end of his challenge. Mm. Now, Tom Whitehouse with his tee shot at the 18th. Still one over. Yes, he's come up short, but he's still found the green. And as I said, this green is a tough green to find, so he'd be pleased with that. Oh, dear. And things going. Sean Whiffin's just missed his par putt. Just from bad to worse, really, oh. for Whiffin. Very costly at this stage in the tournament. Well, let's hope he can hold it together on the 18th and doesn't live to rue those mistakes. Now, Nick Ludwell, after that great shot into the heart of the green with his birdie putt. Yes, oh, he's given it a very good try. Just run by on the left edge. Very good putt for Nick. And Ludwell's form continues on the 18th green. Looking very confident. Oh, we see Badridge Edge taking a penalty drop here. He's obviously hit his second shot in the water on 17. He's taking a drop from lateral water hazard. So he'll be playing his uh, fourth shot. Will be Next shot will be his fourth shot. Well, a disappointing error from Bradley Dredge. He'll be upset with himself for uh, just letting things go a little over these closing holes. But once again, taking his time over the shot, we go back to Tom Whitehouse. Practice swing with this very long birdie chance on the 18th. Yes, it's an uphill putt, this is uh, Simon. So he can give it a bit of a run, so. Here it comes. Let's give it Yes, he gave it a good try. He it, got it past the hole. This a little bit of a downhill putt. You'll have to think about that one a little bit. Well, the camera lens showing the conditions still very tough for the golfers as we go back to Dredge. A little chip and run here up to the green. And he's just left it a little short. He's got that for a bogey. So just a little loose over these closing holes. And it's not exactly left the rest of the field back in, but it's really shown how tough this Marriott St. Pierre course is playing. Now Nick Ludwell with his chance for a par. He wants this for a good finish to his round and that yeah. is an excellent performance on the third round from Nick Ludwell. And that puts him leading in the clubhouse now. So, so Ludwell, leader in the clubhouse. Tom Whitehouse now with his par putt. And both of these golfers have uh, played competently over these closing holes. nicely tidied up two good pars they made there on the finishing hole like that I think they'll both be very pleased now Louis Oosthuizen of South Africa has uh, managed to get his game back together after going down to one over he's back to level this to go one under he's left it a little short but a tap in putt I think he'll won't uh, spend too much time with that one well, a nice recovery from the South African. Uh, a lot of lesser golfers might have let things collapse even further, but Oosthuizen's kept in there and kept battling, but unfortunately not managed to maintain his challenge on Bradley Dredge.
Welcome to the Glenmuir Tip of the Week. We've chosen the 18th hole at St. Pierre, a par 3 of 235 yards. It is a very serious challenge. When you're doing well in any competition, whether it be a medal or a tournament of this stature, you're going to feel nervous getting to the 18th. So my tip of the week is to focus on your pre-shot routine. Use the routine to help you get a little bit more relaxed and to find the goal swing you want for that shot. So always have a practice swing, possibly even two, to feel the rhythm that you want because there's a danger by this time of the round you'll get a bit tight and it'll get a bit quicker. So have a practice swing, feel it nice and slow and smooth and then try and copy that when you go to hit the shot. Keep yourself relaxed over the ball and it'll give you every chance of that smooth swing. Routines in golf, all important, especially when conditions and scoring are so tough. Sean Whiffin now trying to keep it together for a good finish. There's yeah, a nice swing, but I think he's pulled that a little bit to the left. Yes, he is. Yep. And he's got a tricky little chip shot too. If Sean can make a par here, it would be a very good finish for him because it'll be the best finish he's had in his tournament career, I would say, in, in, at this tournament. Well, well, Whiffin hopes for a good finish. Dredge just needs to be steady. Oh, nicely hold. That's for a bogey. So it was a nice holding putt. And there again, the experience reflected by Bradley Dredge, knowing when to do the work. Here's Sean's chip at the last. He's played a very nice chip shot. Just run a bit past. It's foreshortened by the camera, but I would say it's about 8 to 10 foot. And that's a very important putt for Sean now to hold. Certainly things could have been a lot worse in terms of outcome for Sean Whiffen. Well, a few faces there that I'm sure we'll see on this tour in years to come. Here's Sean's putt for a par. The last, oh dear, what a shame. It looked like it was in. He must have felt that was in. That's a costly miss for Sean at the last. But he still had a very, very good tournament. And he's got to take a lot of good positive things from this tournament this week. So Sean Whiffin taps in for a bogey. Looks a little disappointed. But overall, that's a good weekend's work for him. Louis Oosthuizen then, his tee shot at the 18th. He has a lovely swing this lad Simon, really lovely rhythm, quite powerful looking movement. Yes, he's hit a lovely shot there, must have been right down the flag from where he was standing, but just come up a little bit short. Well, certainly one of the better shots we've seen into the 18th green. Now Bradley Dredge, his playing partner and leader at four under, will be trying to match that. He won't want uh, this score to drop uh, any further, will he? No, he won't, but he's concentrating very hard and he's going through a really good pre-shot routine as, uh, as we've just spoken before. And now he's uh, settling in. He's putting every ounce of concentration into this. And that's a beautifully balanced looking swing. I assume this is going to hit the target somewhere. Yeah, it's a fine shot. In fact, it's one of the best shots we've seen there all day. So a safe tee shot from Dredge on the final hole virtually guarantees him the title, leaving Nick Ludwell and Stephen Pullen waiting nervously as Oosthuizen plays the last. I had a good uh, last round there. Started off a little bit scrappy, but got going towards the back nine. Hold a few putts and missed a couple as well, which made it a bit more interesting, but just glad to get a good round on my belt. So Louis Oosthuizen then on level with his birdie putt. Here's this to tie Nick uh, second place and uh, Yes, it's online, it's a good putt, but oh dear, he's just left it a little short. What a shame, it must have looked very good from where he was standing. So a simple tap in to finish his third round, but lots of promise from Louis Oosthuizen. This is a very talented looking player. Now Bradley Dredge will want this one to drop to take him back to five under. Be a really nice way to finish the tournament off, a nice birdie at the last. I'm sure he'll be trying his hardest to do that but the pressure really off for Bradley Dredge. And he is guaranteed as the champion, regardless of the outcome of this shot, and just misses on the low side of the hole. But this simple tap-in will confirm Bradley Dredge of Wales, the champion of the Sky Sports Classic here at the Marriott Saint-Pierre. And it's been a brilliant performance from the Welshman as he takes the applause from the crowd. So six under at one stage, but this tough course claimed two shots back to produce a testing finish, but Dredge is the champion.
I played the first two, which is nice, you know, sets me up then for a decent round. So uh, played just sort of sensible golf in the middle and a uh, bit of a hiccup on 16 and 17. It covered good shots, but uh, unfortunately took a couple of bogeys there. So uh, a bit annoying, but uh, still finished it off well. Unable to find a birdie on the last hole, Louis Oosterhuizen finishes tied third on level par. Two over for his final round. I had my chances on 14, 15 every hole, and I just didn't make it, but so uh, I had my chances to go to 100 or maybe 200. So confirmation that Bradley Dredge is the Sky Sports Classic winner, and with it a check for £10,000, while Nick Ludwell finishes in outright second place, picking up vital points and money with Stephen Pullen and Louis Oosterhuizen. then to Bradley Dredge as he receives the Sky Sports Classic Trophy from Peter Little, the chief executive of the PGA Euro Pro Tour. The tour now moves on to marry at Bredsel Priory in Derbyshire. And so my thanks to Lawrence Farmer for his expert comments today. In the meantime, from Lawrence and myself, Simon Golding, goodbye for now.